just like never before in Jesus name amen. amen hallelujah it's a blessing to be alive in the morning living it's a it's a blessing we count it all joy all right tonight's message um, we're gonna be talking about obedient being obedient to the word of God and obtaining his promises so if you have your Bible go me to the book of Jonah and we're gonna start at chapter 1 when you get that saying the book of Jonah chapter 1 
See, when, when a curse is upon you and when a person that is cursed upon you, you're going to want to do anything in your power to get the curse from upon you. So what they did, they cast Jonah into the sea. And when they cast the thing that was cursed into the sea, the sea ceased from being raided, the wind ceased, and the waves ceased. So one thing about it, we got to stop associating ourselves with things that are cursed. we got to stop associating ourselves with things that are blessed. In our life, people got to qualify to be our friend. We just shouldn't associate ourselves with anything or anybody. One thing about it, we got to make sure that we don't think that we better than nobody and we don't think that we all that, but people got to qualify to be our friends. We shouldn't associate ourselves that some with somebody that don't serve the same God as us. We shouldn't associate ourselves with people that don't believe in the same thing that we believe in. That's just like, for instance, just like a Muslim. We should, a Christian and a Muslim is unequally yoked because we believe in different things. They don't believe in our God. And if anybody don't believe in our God, they're an enemy to us. Not saying that we can't love them and not saying that we can't minister to them and lead them with Christ, but we shouldn't have fellowship with them. We shouldn't be, we, we shouldn't intercourse with them. Okay, and then verse um, 15, no, verse 16 said, And the man, they feared the, the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. It says, Now the Lord had appeared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So why should it take to go in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights for God to get your attention? When God tells us to do something, we got to make sure that we be ready to act out on what he tells us to do. Isaiah 1 and 19 said, if you be willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. So that word and is a conjunction, and and connects willing and obedient together. So you got to be willing and obedient. You just can't be obedient to what God tells you to do. you got to be willing. If God asks us to do something, we can't we can't do it without it with grudgingly. That's why the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. When we give, we got to give. we got to be, be thankful that we have to give. On last night, um... I had just um, took my son to football practice. So I stopped at Quick Trip and I was going to put some gas in the car, but the Lord told me not to. He told me to wait later. And I didn't understand why because I had the money to do it then. So I got home and then I decided to go to Quick Trip and it was a lady up there. And she approached me. She said, Sir, I um, only have, she was, she was in the car with her door. She said, Sir, I only have $25 to my name. I can stay in the homeless shelter. I get unemployment. But I lost my house. I lost my job. I don't have nowhere to stay. So I told her, I said, I only had $50 on me. And I just put all that in the tank. So I was about to leave, and the Lord told me to go find her. So I found her. I said, um, do you mind waiting right here? I stay right down the street. I'm going to go home, and I'll be right back. So I went home, and she said she only needed $49 to get her a hotel room. And she said I had, she had $25 on her. So I said, okay, I can help you. So the Lord told me to give her $100, and I gave her $100. She was so excited. She was so thankful. And I was telling my wife, I said, for her to be going through what she's going through, her spirit went down. She didn't have no pride. She said, I got to do what I got to do to provide for me and my daughter. And a lot of times, you just, a lot of times, I can be kind of skeptical about giving people things. Cause you, all, you know, sometimes a lot of people be trying to hustle. But I didn't pick that up about her. She was real sincere, and she was saying that she said, "I get, I get food stamps." But I just don't have nowhere to stay. And she was like, she was tired of staying in the homeless shelter because she said at a certain time, a uh, day they got to leave and they can't return back to a certain time. And she said she done caught weed worm in a homeless shelter. And she said she just wanted a place to stay. And she said, now I'm going to take this money that you blessed me with and I'm going to get a hotel room for the arm. Um, well, we, I guess she's going to stay at a lot. A lot of times, we can offer people prayer, but that's just like somebody come to me and they tell me they're hungry, and I say, well, let me pray for you, but I don't have no food to get them, but after I get through praying for them, they're still hungry. The problem, I haven't solved the problem. So a lot of times, prayer is good. I'm not I'm not saying that prayer is good, but a lot of times, we got to have some substance to bless people with, too. And one thing about it, we always pray that we bless to be a blessing. It's not about us. And it's like, it's about what we can do for others. And if you're trying to help others, and you're trying to uplift others, you will always be blessed. I ain't never seen a gift that's broke or a giver that's not taken care of. If you're a giver and you truly give from your heart and you truly is about blessing people and enhancing the kingdom of God, you're going to be prosperous. You're going to be blessed. And one thing about it, as people, we go through things, but we go through things for development. You might go through something that I haven't went through, but you can tell me why I went through this and you can encourage me how to get through. God, I mean, my house burned down. We lost everything that we had. And I said, Lord, how am I going to recover for this? But God made a way. We God bless us with a house and a house, the first house we had, we outgrew that house like that. And he blesses with another house. The so one thing about it, 
no matter what you're going through today, no matter what type of situation and circumstance you face, we're not subject to our circumstances and situations. Our situation is subject to us. It's whatever we call it. Just, just like an eagle. When an eagle flies, when an eagle sees a storm coming, an eagle don't try to avoid the storm. He lock his wings down. He fly above the storm. So what the eagle's flying at, it's sunny. And so likewise, when we go through stuff, people might be looking at us and say, they just lost their house. They just lost their car. They just lost us. How they still smiling? Because they don't see what we see. We find above our storm. We find above our situation and circumstances. So where we at, it's, it's, it's sunny. So where we at, the sun is shining. So we can't get, get, get by.